Ascorbic acid, better known as vitamin C, is one of the most powerful antioxidants we have, but some people say it's dangerous. Let's analyze it together in this video. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm always Pasquale, your nutrition and lifestyle coach. Today we'll talk about vitamin C. We will see what it is in detail, in what food it is and what functions it plays within the organism and which are the minimum and maximum doses that we can ingest. When we talk about vitamin C we refer to the chemical compound defined as L-ascorbic acid. This molecule is water soluble meaning it melts in watery solution and it has a slightly acid pH. Humans uh, are the one uh, with a few species with the guinea pigs, some fruiting bats and some species of monkeys that are not able to synthesize this vitamin. All the other animals and plants on earth are able to synthesize it autonomously from glucose, both by renal and hepatic way. The lack of the enzyme called l gulactonone oxidase is the cause of which the humans can no longer produce vitamin C autonomously. This is most likely to probably evolutionary reason. In fact, the gene is present, but it is in an active form, so is mutator, and whereby the synthesis phase of vitamin C is not possible. Now let's see what the function of vitamin C are. First of all, as many people will know, uh, the absence of or chronic deficiency of vit vitamin C is the cause of scurvy. For the fact that vitamin C is involved in production of collagen and to keep the connective tissues intact, as well as bone tissues and also dentin present in the teeth. Scurvy became particularly evident when ships began to make long journeys. It was a surgeon in the English Navy, James Lean, who carried out the first taste in 1747, adding origins and lemons to the sailors' diet. Even the famous uh, explorer James Cook uh, used to take with him some sauerkraut, which contains this vitamin. Scurvy is a, is a disease that initially causes tiredness, weakness and swelling of the limbs. Without proper intervention, it can lead to gingival bleeding and in a slowdown of wound healings and subsequently due to the infection of the wounds that remain open even to death. It is to be said that nowadays having such a deficiency from vitamin C such as developed the scurvy, it is a rare thing considering that almost all foods albeit minimally contain ascorbic acid. Well, now let's talk about the benefit of vitamin C and its uses and also the recommended doses of intake. First of all, ascorbic acid is also used as a food additive, indicated by the acronym of E300 among the preservatives approved by the European Union. In fact, it hinders and process of burning of foods, avoiding oxidation that helps into the contact of food with the oxygen present in the surrounding air. Moreover, it, presents, it prevents the nitrates added in the most of food industries like cheeses and cured meats to control the bacterial load to transform itself into the most dangerous nitritis, which are instead cancerogenic substances for our organism. Vitamin C might be the key of Alzheimer's prevention and premature aging therapies. In fact, some studies, especially one Italian made by the University of Genoa, and in which I leave the link in the description box below, try to understand if, thanks to its antioxidant properties, vitamin C can delay the oxidative cell processes. I'm not talking about cell phone, eh? I'm talking about your body cells. By delaying the growth of aging processes of the, cell, of the cells, the aging of the person also tends to delay and thus the co-occurrence of diseases such as the Alzheimer's disease. Another key aspect is the ability to regenerate vitamin E. In fact, through chemical processes, it is able to donate an electron to one of the oxidized compounds of the vitamin E, which is called tecopherol radical, transforming vitamin C into diascorbic acid. This allows us to maintain our cellular process in full efficiencies and binds to the previous point in terms of protective processes of the prevention of diseases such as the Alzheimer's. Vitamin C has also been studied uh, as a long period of time as a powerful ally of our immune system. In fact, vit vitamin C seems to be a potent activator of the neutrophil granulocyte, which are a type of leukocytes, white cells, which are precise defense system of our organism against fungal and antibacterial infections. So they are our primary weapon in defending against respiratory infections. 
It is thought that a sufficient dose to maintain the neutrophil granulocyte is around 120 mg of ascorbic acid per day. In this regard, I leave also a link in the description box below just on a study conducted on this matter. Another factor of interest is the ability of vitamin C to increase the absorption of iron in our diet. The iron we ingest through our diet is absorbed by the intestinal mucosa. The presence of vitamin C is a potent cofactor for the absorption of iron of vegetable origin, even if the one present in fish, meat or poultry is increased in terms of absorption. For this, I would be a good price to add to our meal vitamin C rich vegetables. Another very important process is the one that allows the production of collagen. Collagen is the main protein part of our connective tissues and vitamin C is involved in the chemical processes that allow the creation of collagen through the transformation of proline and lysine, these are two essential amino acids involved in the collagen production. In addition to collagen, also helps the conversion of folic acid, the so-called vitamin B9, from its inactive form to the active form, allowing our organism to use in the correct form. Folic acid is a very important to avoid problem of synthesis of our genetic materials, which are RNA and DNA. This is seen mainly in the development of spina bifida during pregnancies. Vitamin C is a thermolable compound, meaning it degrades on high temperatures. So it tends to denature during cooking at high temperatures or during long cooking processes, especially in water being, as I said before, hydrosoluble. Well, now let's talk about the recommended daily doses, the minimum and those doses that could create toxicity. The minimum amount of vitamin C to avoid the scurvy is 10 mg per day. Most European and American guidelines, however, tend to recommend higher amounts to keep the safe test threshold high as well as having all the benefits that I listed earlier. So the guidelines talk about of a recommended intake that is between the 60 and the 75 mg per day. One only key is now to cover and pass the threshold, but we're talking about food soon. The values tend to be raised also because uh, different types of people have different needs. For example, pregnant women need daily 10 more milligrams of vitamin C. In the lactation phase, they need more 30 milligrams added to the main uh, value. An avid smoker intake should be the double, so around 150 milligrams per day. This, as you can understand, is obviously necessary because uh, the smoke induces inflammatory and oxidative, oxidative processes and the vitamin C is all conveyed to the, to the resolution of this problem. So, please don't smoke. Doses of 1 or 2 grams daily should be absolutely fine. These doses should be only uh, bring benefits to yourself. The only disturbances that occur is a bit of diarrhea, flatulence or small, slightly intestinal problems to the acidity of the ascorbic acid, but this is not happen to everyone. At the moment, a little dose is unknown. Some experiments done on rats indicate that for a human, the lethal dose should be around 150 grams, taken in a single intake. But I honestly do not think that anyone could eat almost a kilogram of vitamin C all at once, unless you happen to be mammoths. In some studies, it has been seen that high doses of vitamin C can induce a formation of kidney stones, but this is not the normality, these are exceptional situations, and I honestly don't re do not recommend to take over 2 grams per day, even if I know that some people take about 10 grams per day. Talking about myself, for example, between diet and supplements, I'm always around a full gram of vitamin C per day. Remember that being water-soluble vitamins, uh, the vitamin C in excess is always eliminated through the urine. Well, as I said before, vitamin C is typically found in vegetables and fruit. Some products notoriously rich in ascorbic acid are all the citrus fruits, like lemon and oranges, kiwis, peppers and chilies, for which I have made a video about it and you find the links about it at, this, at the end of this video, parsley and tomatoes, apples and some green leafy vegetables. The content of vitamin C present in common fruit is greater for the kiwi, which is almost 80 mg per 100 g of fruit and which, as I said before, I can cover the full recommended daily intake. Rosa canina, also known as dog rose, contains about 1250 mg for 100 g of edible part. A little known fruit called acerola contains up to 1,700 mg per 100 g of edible fruit. The currently known fruit that contains the most uh, vitamin C is the Terminalia ferdinandiana, known as the kakadu plum, which contains an amount of vitamin C that is between 2 and 3 grams for 100 grams of fruit. Just to remind you that also 
well-known fruit like citrus fruit as oranges, lemons and lime contains a very respectable dose of about 50 mg per 100 grams of edible part. Among the vegetables, in addition to the red and yellow peppers containing about 50 mg per 100 grams, and for the hot peppers contain about 229 mg per 100 grams, and which I said before, you will find the links of the previous video at the end of this one. Respectable doses are present in broccoli, rocket with about 100, 110 mg per 100 grams, and also Brussels sprout uh, which with around 80 mg per 100 grams of edible part. I remind you that uh, being an antioxidant is in text to fruit and vegetables should be always made uh, with possible after purchases, just after, a possible without cooking method, but raw. Otherwise, its presence will be drastically reduced by oxidative process due to contact with the surrounding air and thermal to the cooking. In conclusion, vitamin C is one of those compounds with the, that are absolutely necessary to our body for optional function. We should never forget that a proper supply of raw vegetables and fresh fruit to optimize its presence is necessary. In the next video we will start a new series of diet and food regimes. We will talk about the vegetarian diet. Please com comment on this video if you have a question or doubts. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the bell notification to receive new updates on my videos. Follow me on Facebook page and on my Instagram page and on my website www.healthmefood.com. As usually, I'm only left to say, eat well, live well and smile, and see you next time. Ciao!